Okay, I'm going to walk through installing Ruby on Rails on Windows 7. Um, this is going to be the default uh, uh, vanilla Rails install. It will not be using MySQL as uh, instructions I've done in the past have included. I will make a separate video um, if you want to use MySQL, but this is just going to be the vanilla Rails uh, on Windows 7. And I'm going to see if I can't walk through this first time uh, and only time, just because I'm so short on time. So, anyhow, let's get started. Let's go to rubyinstaller.org and let's click on download. And here, let's click on the first link here, the Ruby 2.0 uh, 481 here, not the X64. We do not want that one. We're going to click on the first one, which is the 32-bit the version of Ruby. So let's click that to get that started. And we need to find the development kit here and we want to make sure we grab this one Ruby 2.0 32-bit version okay this is the second link in the dev kit section click that to get that uh, downloaded and while that's downloading looks like the Ruby installer finished downloading so let's get that started and English is fine we'll accept the license and here instead of uh, C Ruby 2.0.0. Let's put it under C colon backslash R O W backslash, and that's going to be really important for these instructions. So I'd recommend you do that. Um, and we may as well click the second link here, adding it to the path, and we'll click install. And we can click finish. And at least on my machine, dev kit's still going. So let's find the command prompt. For me, uh, it's in this list because I've used it recently. But command prompt should be for you under, um, let's try this again here. Uh, all programs, under accessories, there's command prompt. And what I'm actually, what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click on it and go pin to taskbar. Okay, so now I've got the command prompt icon down here. I can click that, and my command prompt comes up. If Ruby's installed correctly, uh, we should be able to do Ruby-V, and you'll get this version uh, output. Keep in mind, again, this is really important. We want, we want to see I386 MINGW32, okay? So now with DevKit, um, let's close that. With DevKit downloaded, let's click on that to get that started. And we'll click Run. And what we'll do is actually, let's click on here to find the directory. And what I want to do is find the uh, C. And here, where was it? Where is it there? Row, that's what we did there. Let's, and then under Row here, Let's just make a new folder called DevKit and click OK. So you'll see here C colon backslash row backslash DevKit. Let's click on Extract. And that should happen pretty quick. Maybe I'll pause it here and I'll come back when that's done. OK, and that's extracted. So let's go find out where it went. Uh, we'll open up Command Prompt. And let's cd, uh, which is change directory, backslash row, and then dir to hit the directory listing. You can see that there's a dev kit directory. Let's cd into dev kit and hit dir, and you'll notice that there's, um, there's some files here. If you want to type in ruby dk.rb init. And so you'll notice here that it went and found the Ruby installer. That's correct. That's where, where uh, the version of Ruby that we want installed is installed. So then I just hit the up arrow there to see how we can cycle through the up and down, can cycle through the commands. The next command we want Ruby dk.rb install. And then hit enter. And now that should be installed correctly. Now there's a a verification we can do. Let's go back here and um, where is it? Documentation. 
Yeah, let's click on this link, which will, should take us to GitHub, if I recall correctly. Taking a little while there. And it talks about how to do the install. And then at the end here, we should be able to test that everything worked properly. So let's copy this text here, gem install JSON and then platform equals Ruby. We'll go back to our command prompt and let's paste that in there. Okay, and see what happens. You can see that it's using DevKit to do the install. And here we can just skip these. Uh, these are just warnings on the documentation. Um, and everything from what I can see there, everything looked fine. Let's then copy this text, okay, which is going to run, uh, oops, run the command that will include uh, or require the JSON gem that we just installed. So let's go back here, right click and paste that in. And if this works, as it does here, just outputs 42. We know that the, we know that the gem installed, which was a good verification that, um, that DevKit installed correctly, and that will allow us now to compile certain gems for Rails that require these native extensions. So, um, let's see. Now, the next thing what we're going to do, take a just a quick little uh, detour before we install Rails. Type in uh, if you're at c colon backslash row. Let's type in Notepad. Exe. And what should happen is you should get Notepad comes up. And what we're going to do is we're going to create a file called row.bat. And row is just short for Rails on Windows. And we're going to uh, start Rails, a Rails. We're going to make a command prompt that's Rails only. Okay? So the, the first thing we're going to do, some of this might not make sense to uh, some of you out there, but just bear with me here. Um, we're going to set path. So the path is the environment variable that uh, has a list of directories that the system can search to find programs. And what we want to do is make sure that the path environment variable is set to a limited number of options for our particular version of Rails or our, or our Rails install. So the first thing we want is to set um, the path to include Windows. And we also want it to include C colon backslash windows backslash system 32. And that will give us access to some common uh, programs like Explorer or Notepad and other Windows uh, system programs. From there, um, let's see here, we want to make sure that we add, uh, add the location of Ruby. So let's set path equals, and then the way that we can append to the path, we could just create a whole bunch on one line here and make sure that they're all separated with semicolons, just like we added here. But I like to keep it a little bit more tidy, even if it's a little bit more verbose. So what we're doing here is we're referencing the existing path, and that's what we do with the, with the percent signs around path, and then we'll put a semicolon, and then we're going to add in C colon backslash row backslash ruby 200 backslash bin. So then when we launch this, this uh, row.bat, we should be able to have access to the Ruby executable. Now, the next thing we'll do is we'll run, uh, we'll add start, and we'll call it Rails on Windows, and close that, and close that with quotes. And we want the directory, the default directory, to be C colon backslash row just like that. So we'll save it like this, save as, and what I'm going to do is find C and we'll go down to row, and I'm just going to save it as row.bat. Now I don't know, we might make sure to change the save as type to star.star .star and then and then click save and we can close that and let's bring up Explorer, just to try this here. Let's close the command prompt. Okay, and we'll go to C, 
double click on row, and now you'll see this row.bat. And if everything works correctly, when I double click this, this should open up a command prompt specific to our Ruby installation. So let's double click that. Okay, and if we do Ruby dash V, sure enough that works. Okay, so we've got our row.bat. Um, one thing I'd like to do is let's pin this to the, let's send it to the desktop. So send to desktop. Okay, I'm going to close that. I'll minimize this. I'll bring this, this down here. So now from your desktop, you can double click on the row.bat and automatically you got your Rails, your, what's going to become your Rails prompt. So from here, let's, um, yeah, let's type in gem install Rails. And we're going to type in dash dash no dash ri and dash dash no dash our doc. Okay, so we're going to skip the documentation. We don't need it. If you want to look it up online, it, I think, it, you know, it's, no doubt it's available, but to install it just adds more time. Okay, so let's, uh, with that command, we'll hit enter. And this will take a little bit of time. I'll pause the video and come back when it's done. Okay, so it's installing here and it's almost complete. And there we go. So it should say that there's 28 gems installed. And when you scroll up here, you should see that there's no, there's no errors or anything. It just says, you know, success, success, <laughs> success. And uh, from here, now let's hit DIR, list the directory, and let's make a directory called dev. Okay, and we'll change directory to dev, just like that. And we hit DIR, you'll see that that's an empty directory. Um, let's start, uh, let's create a new Rails project. So let's do Rails, new, and we'll type in hello world. And we'll hit enter. Okay, so it's now creating the, the project files, and then it's uh, installing. Now you'll see this bundle install is running, and it's installing any additional gems that the project will require. So we'll just wait for that a bit. I'll pause it and come back when it's done. Okay, and it's done now. So let's hit DIR again. And now we can CD into Hello World. And we hit DIR, and you can see that there's, this is the root of the, uh, of the Rails project. We can type in Explorer and space, oops, space dot. And that will, dot refers to the current path, will hit enter and now you can see that Explorer comes up and we're in the, in the hello world directory. I've got something called a program called Sublime Text installed so I'm going to click start and Sublime Text. It's a more advanced text editor than um, Notepad from project. I'm going to go add folder to project and let's find um, that's where is it row and dev and hello world, click OK, and you can see now the root project. Let's click on uh, back to the command prompt, and we're going to type in, now that Rails is, uh, we've created a project, we want to test this project. So let's do Rails G um, scaffold, and we'll, we'll create uh, something for user, uh, or users. Let's try adding an email and we'll say first name, make that a string, and a last name string as well. Hit enter. And that will generate a bunch of files. And let's do a rake db migrate. So when it created those, generated those files, it also generated some database uh, migrations and Looks like the migrations worked well. Let's do Rails S to start the Rails server. And we'll bring up back, bring up Chrome, bring up HTTP localhost 3000. You can see that um, we've, everything's running here properly. And if we go to slash users, oops. We have the default listing. So I'm running out of time for this video, but I'll continue on real shortly.